Is this it? Is this? Do they live here? Gennady Tsirvma has been away from his home village of Amvrosivka in Ukraine for nearly 30 years. In the spring of 1983, he was drafted into the Soviet army and sent to Afghanistan. Almost as soon as he arrived, he was taken prisoner. My God, is that you, Gennady? <laughs> this is the first time he's been home after all those years. When he left, his cousin Natasha was 29 years old. Now, she's 58. Is this your son? What's his name? Igor. Hello, Igor. Hello, hello. Aunt Valya, his father's sister, will soon be 80. <laughs> Gennady's Mujahideen captors gave him the Muslim name of Nikmamat. He reluctantly takes his six-year-old son to this hill on the outskirts of Kunduz, where the remnants of Soviet tanks can be found scattered all over the slope. I still have vivid memories of those events, even though 20 years have passed. I saw our tanks and soldiers being blown up. But I couldn't do anything about it. I was being held prisoner. On that ill-fated day in 1983, Gennady left his unit without permission. He claims he was drunk and simply wanted to see people praying in the local mosque. Suddenly, the Mujahideen overpowered him and put a bag over his head. They hit me over the head and knocked me unconscious. But nonetheless, I've lived a full life here for 30 years. The Soviet war in Afghanistan lasted for 10 years. The USSR had brought a communist regime to power and then provided it with economic and military aid. This support resulted in nearly 15,000 Soviet soldiers dead, some 50,000 wounded, with more than 300 missing and assumed to be traitors. Gennady Tsevma was one of those. The Mujahideen tried to force me to fight on their side, but I didn't. They put a gun in my hands, but I never fired a single shot. This is what Gennady Tsevma looked like when he was sent off to join the Soviet army. Next to Gennady is his brother Sergei, who was only 11 years old at the time. Years later, Gennady Nikmamat was able to find his brother's address and phone number. Hi, dear brother. Do you want me to come and see you? Will you be waiting for me? After 30 years, Gennady Nikmamat has resolved to return to his native Ukraine. The USSR is gone, and he's only just learned that the Soviet Union had declared an amnesty for both prisoners of war and deserters. OK, dear Sergei, I'll be there for at least two weeks. Hope to see you soon. A short while before leaving Afghanistan, Gennady Nikmamat makes a video of his family and everyday life. He wants to show it to his brother, Sergei. This is the main street. Now, Sergei, we are approaching my home. For nearly 30 years, Gennady lived in lodgings in Afghanistan. Only recently was he able to raise enough money to buy a small plot of land and build a clay house. Altogether, it cost $3,000. His family has only just moved in, even though it's not quite finished yet. Now this is where all our plates are right now, gathering dust. They need to be cleaned and stored properly. Now, Sergei, this is where we sleep and eat in the evenings when it's too hot inside. Gennady Nikmamat has spent much more of his life in Afghanistan than in his native Ukraine. He got married, and he and his wife have had four kids. This is Pavlusha, my youngest daughter. Pavlusha is 15 years old. She doesn't look as much like an Afghan child as Gennady's other children. She has freckles, a pale face and blue eyes, quite typical of a Ukrainian girl. 
Do you know who this is, Sergei? It's my little boy, Samidjon. He's six years old. He's just started school. Sangimo, Gennady's eldest daughter, is 17. She'll soon leave her parents home to go to Kabul to get married. Her parents are making preparations for the wedding ceremony. Now, Sergei, let's go into this room. Please let me introduce you to my wife. Her name is Yeva. Gennady Nikmamat married Yeva when she was only 15 years old. 21 years on, they're still together. Their first child was born shortly after the marriage. His father nicknames him Fyodor. Now, Sergei, let me show you Fyodor. Just a moment. Gennady Nikmamat has taught his son a few Russian phrases so he can greet his relatives in Ukraine. Uncle Sergei. Okay, Fyodor, say, I want to come and visit you in Ukraine. Ukraine. Gennady Nikmamat is dying to go to Ukraine as soon as possible. The moment comes early in the morning. When his youngest son, Samijan, woke up, the boy couldn't understand why his father was leaving and for how long he would be away. Avlusha bursts into tears. She worries that her father may never come back. Gennady's wife is firmly opposed to the idea of her husband visiting his home country. She thinks he'll succumb to nostalgia and might never return. Fazolo accompanies his father all the way to the border with Tajikistan, which used to be part of the Soviet Union. Fazolo hopes that he will be able to leave Afghanistan with his father. It makes me happy to know that at long last my father is going to his home country. God willing, I might go there sometime too. I don't know what is more important to me, my home country or my family. I hope that things work out somehow. The port of Shirkan Banda is on the border of Afghanistan and Tajikistan. Gennady Nikmamat bids farewell to his son. This bridge we're on takes us across the border. He's waited 29 years for the opportunity to cross the bridge between these two countries. For most, it's a short distance of 500 meters. For Gennady, it's a lifetime. Farewell, Afghanistan. Now we're off. It takes five hours to fly to Kiev and another one and a half to Donetsk. Gennady Nikmamat can't take his eyes away from the window. 30 years ago, he flew the same route, but in the other direction. I'm flying into a new life. As the plane approaches, only a few minutes remain before he's able to step on his native soil. He's longed for this moment throughout his years of captivity in Afghanistan. Hello, motherland. I've been away for 29 years. Gennady's brother, Sergei, lives in Taras, 70 kilometers from Donetsk. Gennady last saw him just before he left for the army. Sergei was a young boy then. Can I come in? May I? It's you, brother. Come in, come in. Hello. Sergei has never believed that his brother betrayed the Soviet Union to side with the Mujahideen. Hi, Ludmila. Welcome, Gennady, welcome. Come in, dear. Initially, letters from his army unit said Gennady Tsevma was missing. Later, they claimed he'd gone over to the Afghan side. But Sergei was somehow sure the truth would come out one day and they would see each other again. Let me hug you, brother. Don't we look alike? <laughs> How's your heart? My heart's pounding. 
I went out for a smoke, but my hands are still shaking. The following morning, they head to the village of Amvrosivka, where the two brothers spent their childhood. It was from there that Gennady Nikmamat was drafted into the army. As he walks around, the streets evoke vivid memories of those distant times, when he was simply a boy called Gennady. My sweet Amrosivka, even after so many years, I have no difficulty finding my home. I cross the ravine, turn on Pushkin Street, and then turn on the right. Just like that. Their old street looks just as it did 30 years ago. There's still no asphalt. Only old people live in the neighborhood now. All the young people have moved to the big cities. Gennady Nikmamat has seen that it's hard to live both in Kunduz and Amvrosivka. Our house is all run down. It's not even been painted. Maybe they have no money. This was the house Gennady Nikmamat lived in before heading to Afghanistan. He adores every single nook and cranny in it. I used this window to get in and out. The home was sold after both their parents died and Sergei moved to Torres. Nobody in? Well, if there is nobody about, let's go. Gennady's parents didn't live long enough to welcome him back home. This is the first time that Gennady Nikmamat has seen the graves of the people he loved. Hello, Father. I'm so sorry I couldn't see you when you were still alive. Back in 1991, Gennady's parents were told their son was still alive, imprisoned in Afghanistan. He pleaded with me to come back home, but no, I could never do it. Gennady's father died a few years later. Well, goodbye, Dad. Farewell. His mother died shortly afterwards. She was buried close to her husband. My dearest mother. Gennady asks his mother to forgive him and promises to come here again each year. Gennady is a former soldier from Ukraine. During the Soviet-Afghan war, he was captured by the Mujahideen. 30 years on, he's finally returned home. His parents have long since passed away, and only a few of his relatives are still alive. Hello. Will you let some guests in? Don't be afraid, it's our dog. Dear me, it's Gennady. Hello, Aunt Ludmila. Welcome, sweetheart. Gennady Nikmamat plays his video from Afghanistan. This is the first time that his relatives can see how he's lived during all those years away from home. Here we are, Sergei, coming into the house. It's my home, my Afghan home. Here's one room, and here's the corridor. There's no running water, no sewerage, and no heating. Only the super-rich in Afghanistan can afford such luxuries. But Gennady Nikmamat is pleased with what he has. At least he owns what little there is. When we marry off Faisalo, I'll allow the couple to live in this room here. Let's check it out. Fazullo is to be married too, but no date has yet been set for the wedding ceremony. Right now, he's the only breadwinner for the family. Every other week, he works in a fuel supply company for $300 a month. His father used to work as a truck driver. Later, he was a translator from Dari Persian into Russian. 
Now he has difficulty walking to the market because of a problem with his leg. This way. Gennady Nikmamat rarely goes shopping. There's only just enough money for food. $300 isn't much in Afghanistan. Life is hard in Afghanistan. Everything costs a pretty penny. I've run up a debt of $2,000 for the house and repairs, but I can't possibly repay it. As Gennady Nikmamat wanders between the stalls, it occurs to him that such markets with an abundance of oriental goods only appeared recently. The Taliban had banned the use of TV sets and even mobile phones. Now Kunduz has developed a taste for the peaceful life. Do you want a gun? However, local kids are still enjoying playing with toys from yesteryear. Gennady Nikmamat hasn't held one of these in his hands for many years. Another present is a yashmak for Gennady's eldest daughter. Yashmaks cost $9 a piece. Women in Kunduz still cover their faces with veils, but ladies of fashion in the capital Kabul can afford to wear a regular headscarf. Women have to cover their faces. After all, this is a Muslim country. My daughter will have to follow this tradition too, because she is now a grown-up woman. On his way back, Gennady Nikmamat wants to buy some food. He hunts around the stalls, seeing who has the cheapest price for minced meat and tenderloin. There are no fridges here. The meat sits out in temperatures of over 45 degrees Celsius. Gennady Nikmamat doesn't have enough money to get a fridge yet. Instead, he buys ice at the local market. Today, Gennady Nikmamat looks forward to a feast meatballs with potatoes, just like he used to have back in Ukraine. His wife, Yeva, cooks it up for him. She's pleased with her husband. He's caring and very generous. Although we've been together for more than 20 years, my neighbors, friends and relatives still think my husband is a Russian. Afghan men often beat their wives up. He has never done that. There are neither chairs nor tables in Gennady Nikmamat's house. Like all Afghan Muslims, the family sits on the floor at mealtime. When food was scarce, they often ate nothing but flat cakes for weeks on end. Fighting never stops in Afghanistan. There was one war, there will be another. Life there is no life at all. I need to get the hell out of there. At one point, Gennady Nikmamat began to seriously consider the prospect of returning home for good. Nearly every night, he saw his village in his dreams. The clinic, the dam, the bus terminal, and the chestnut tree near the bus stop. Gennady Nikmamat was a young man when he left his country. Now he's so old that his cousin didn't even recognize him when he visited her at work. Come over, please. Somebody's here to see you. Do you recognize me? Is this her, Sergei? She doesn't recognize me. I think she's in shock. It's not a dream. When Gennady Nikmamat left his home for the army, Natasha was only eight years old. I've seen all of you at last. His relatives still see him as the young man they knew before he left and are happy to see him back. They refuse to believe that he might once have been a traitor shooting at fellow soldiers. As far as his relatives are concerned, he's returned home from war after 30 years of absence. Hello, dear. Hi, dear. My God, welcome back, my darling. <laughs> It's hard for you to stand up. Hello, <laughs> 
Rumors about Gennady Nikmamat's homecoming quickly spread around the village of Amvrozovka. Friends and neighbors who were also in the army turn out to see him. Hello, guys. I'm not speaking to you. Gennady Nikmamat had not expected this sort of welcome. I can't greet you, brother. First tell us what you did in Afghanistan all those years. Then we'll decide whether or not we can shake hands. It's only natural. How should we address you? Gennady. It was your name. And now? I'm still Gennady. He thought the Soviet-Afghan war was over and done with a long time ago. But they too had fought in Afghanistan and wanted to know what Gennady Nikmamat had been doing in enemy trenches. Forgive me. You see, all of us here have their own story to tell. I, for one, was wounded, had a concussion and so on. When I came back, I weighed 55 kilos. So we want to hear your story. Let's do it later. We haven't seen him for 29 years. Gennady's sisters lead him away to a party celebrating his return. The soldiers who had fought in Afghanistan get no answer to their question. They wanted to know whether Gennady Nikmamat was a traitor to his unit. Anyone who was among the Mujahideen would have been dead if he had not adopted their faith and had not fired on Soviet troops. That's the crux of the matter. This man lived in Kunduz, but we lost four men in fighting there. How can I forgive him? Eight men who went to Afghanistan from the Amvrasevsk region died in the Soviet-Afghan war. A monument commemorating them stands on the Avenue of Heroes. Gennady Nikmamat never visited. When Gennady was still in Afghanistan, a Russian gave him a recording of a song. It's about a pilot flying home the bodies of soldiers killed in Afghanistan. In Russia, the song has become a hymn to all those who lost their lives in the Afghan war. К русским зорницам несет ребятишек домой в черном тюльпане. Те, кто заданий. Gennady Nikmamat has dreamed of this reunion for 29 years. All of his surviving aunts, sisters, and brothers are gathered together. I'm so happy to see you in our country, 29 years on. I'm very glad for all of us here. Thank you very much. I think everything will be okay. Old photos dating back to when they and their parents were still young are brought out. They're from a time when all of them thought they would always be together. Look, Gennady, that's you and I together. That's a nice picture. And this picture shows all of us. Probably it was some kind of celebration. In turn, Gennady Nikmamat shows the video of his life in Afghanistan. When he called his home in Kunduz the day before, he learned that the house had been given a facelift and all their belongings had been moved into it. His wife and four children expect him to come back. He can't abandon them. Before heading back to Afghanistan, Gennady Nikmamat drives to a field to reflect. Even though he spent the first 18 years of his life in Ukraine and 30 in Afghanistan, he's a stranger in both countries. To the latter, he's a Shirawi, the Farsi name for Soviet soldiers in Afghanistan, while to some in Ukraine, he's a deserter. He still can't decide for himself whether he's a traitor or a victim of circumstance. Was it better that he survive or should he have ended up just another unknown soldier lost in the turmoil of war? <laughs>